Hello and welcome back. Even though I will probably never be able to top last year's Christmas video, I still wanted to bring you guys some cozy recipes for this season. Also, I'm pretty sure it's the law that as a YouTuber, you have to post at least one piece of holiday content each year. I thought it'd be fun to test out some Christmas treats from around the world today and just see how I like them. So I'm, I'm basically altering traditional recipes slightly you know, for them to become plant-based. And then I'm also adding my own little twists here and there. Also, thanks to Squarespace for yet again sponsoring the recipes. This first Christmas treat has the most adorably sounding name ever, Bagley. It's this delicious buttery poppy seed roll from Hungary. Poppy seeds stand for wealth and health, which I'm guessing is part of the reason these are being made around Christmas and the new year. First, warm up the non-dairy milk. Pour it into a small to medium bowl or a glass. I, I could have chosen a bigger one for sure. Mix in one tablespoon of powdered sugar plus a few tablespoons of applesauce. Now the temperature of this mix should be at a lukewarm level. Once that's the case, sprinkle over the dry active yeast and allow this to sit in a warm protected spot for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, measure out the flour, mix in the salt, and the remaining powdered sugar. Cut some cold vegan butter into chunks, add those to the flour bowl, and then distribute the butter with your hands like so until you're left with little butter flakes. Next, add some fresh orange zest and some vanilla. Lastly, pour in the yeast mixture and mix everything up with a spoon until it starts to come together. Then transfer this to your surface, kneading with your hands for a good five minutes. Put the ball of dough back into the bowl you just used, cover it up and place it somewhere warm to rise for 30 minutes. In the meantime, make the filling. Grab a separate bowl and add the poppy seeds, some powdered sugar and give that a quick mix. Next, pour over some hot non-dairy milk, some lemon zest, vanilla, and salt. Mix that up again and then leave that to rest for about 20 minutes-ish. Give the dough another quick knead. Cut this in half because we're going to be making two rolls out of this. Roll and fill one after the other. Once you have your rectangle or oval rather, add half the filling to it leaving about an inch or two and a half centimeters of space around the edges. Tuck in the unfilled sides and then roll it up like so. And repeat. Also make sure you've got a parchment paper lined baking sheet ready to go. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius now. To get that deep brown color on the outside, I brush the rolls with a date syrup and oat milk solution. Yeah, this gives you like a similar effect to the traditional egg wash. Bake your rolls for 30 to 35 minutes. I cut into the first one here right away. Did not waste a second. These are so cozy and they taste even better the next morning I found. So although you can serve these right away, I would recommend to give them a bit of time on the counter first. And since they're also not too sweet, they make for a really, really great and fancy looking breakfast as well. All right, let's do a German recipe for ones, AKA German gingerbread cookies. There are many different types of Lebkuchen out there and I'm going to recreate the ones that I grew up eating the most. Elisenlebkuchen. These are so good and so easy to make. In a large bowl, combine all the ingredients for the filling. That's ground almonds, chopped almonds, ground hazelnuts, salt, powdered sugar, some sort of Christmas spice. Traditionally, you would use like a ready-made gingerbread spice mix. You can easily improvise here with what you have. I will have some suggestions for spices in the description as well. Okay, now instead of whipping up eggs, I'm going to be whipping up some chickpea water. 
just give it three or four minutes having the hand mixer at full full speed until it reaches a low level of stiffness fold in the dry ingredients together with some vanilla drops some rum drops almond drops also a syrup of some kind i did date syrup here Next, some chopped candied orange and lemon goes in here. I just do a few tablespoons, but feel free to do the whole pack. Mix this up well and then set it aside for a good two to three hours. Now on to building the gingerbreads. Preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius. The base is made up of little sheets called obladen. I'm not sure if you can find these everywhere in the world, but since they honestly don't do a whole lot, you can just bake the gingerbreads without any of that. Yeah, simply just by shaping the dough into cookie shape. So my mom owns this little Lebkuchen gadget, which is nice for measuring out equal amounts of dough, but your hands work just as well. It's about two tablespoons of dough per gingerbread, I would say. I wish I could I at you, baby. I'm just not a natural. Bake these guys for 15 or 20 minutes or until golden brown. Now, during a brief moment of my two brain cells not functioning, I simply forgot to bake these at first. Like, I covered a few of those with chocolate right away. I mean, they are delicious and edible in a, in a raw state, but they're so much better baked. Now to some melted dark chocolate chips, I'm adding a little bit of vegan butter and cinnamon here. And then I use that to dip my gingerbreads into. Let them set fully and then serve. These are some of my favorite things and I would highly recommend you try them. Now you know what's German as well? The German edition of my cookbook which comes out in about a week. Someone asked me to make something Canadian, so I looked up Canadian Christmas treats and I chose these Nanaimo bars. Nanaimo? Nanaimo, right? It's a three-layer treat consisting of a buttery, chocolatey cookie crust, custard icing, and a layer of chocolate. For the crust, line your baking tin with wet parchment paper and set that aside. In a medium saucepan, place the vegan butter and allow it to melt fully. Meanwhile, crumble up some cookies. In most recipes, I have found graham crackers to be used. Sadly, I couldn't find anything similar to vegan graham crackers, and so I had to improvise. But you know, Biscoff and Christmas go hand in hand, right? Now to the melted butter, add some unsweetened cacao powder and mix that in first before adding all the remaining crust ingredients. That's desiccated coconut, the crumbled up cookies, chopped almonds, salt, flaxseed powder as a binding ingredient, and a bit of extra non-dairy milk to adjust the consistency. Since the Biscoff cookies make these bars insanely sweet, I would recommend and I know that makes these even less traditional. Canadians, please don't come for me. I would, I would recommend cutting the amount of cookie crumbles that you use in half and adding some quick cooking oats to replace half the crumbs with. Yeah, I've made these twice so far and I just really like the oat version better. Anyway, once you've pressed the crumb mixture into place, transfer the baking tin to the fridge or the freezer to firm up while you put together the custard icing or filling. To a large mixing bowl, add some softened vegan butter and whip it up for a few short minutes until light and fluffy. Next, add some vegan vanilla custard powder. Actually, most custard powders are accidentally vegan. And about half a cup of the powdered sugar. Then mix again. And then just keep adding powdered sugar every 30 seconds or so until you have a stiff buttercream frosting. Then to adjust the consistency and to make it nice and spreadable, add the vegan cream one tablespoon at a time until you're happy with the texture. Put this into the freezer for about 30 minutes. Now for the chocolate topping, I simply did a mix of melted dark chocolate and coconut oil. Wait for that to set completely and then you can cut these up. 
So here's version 1, yummy and very sweet. And here's version 2, using the half cookie, half oat base. I took version 2 to a little Christmas potluck recently. I also brought a batch of these Swedish Norwegian saffron buns called Lusikata. Let me like double check how you pronounce this. Lusikata. They're usually baked on December 13th, aka Santa Lucia Day. Though honestly, I would make these year round. They're so good. The yellow color you get from saffron, the most expensive spice in the world. To a small saucepan, add the non dairy milk, sugar, and the saffron and bring that to lukewarm heat. Transfer that to a small bowl. As you can see, my milk is not lukewarm whatsoever. I'm just allowing that to cool off a bit. Once it's just lukewarm to the touch, I sprinkled over some dry active yeast, allowing that to rest for about 10 minutes in a warm spot whilst combining the dry ingredients. Next, add either some vegan sour cream or vegan yogurt to the bowl, plus some room temperature vegan butter, followed by the yeast mixture. Combine everything with a wooden spoon first, and then transfer this to your surface to knead for a good five minutes. Put it back into the bowl you just used, cover it up, and allow it to sit and rest for one hour. Give this another quick knead, and then cut the dough into 12 to 14 somewhat equally sized pieces. To shape the pastries, you first roll them into a thick string and then you roll up each end, creating an S pattern. And then you transfer it to a prepared baking sheet. Traditionally, these are filled with raisins. A bunch of my siblings don't like raisins though, and so I did chocolate chips for most of these. Preheat the oven at this point. Normally, you would brush them with egg wash again. I went for a mix of non-dairy milk and turmeric. And then allow them to bake until fluffy and golden brown. For this last and final recipe, we're doing something from Portugal. It's called Adria. I went to Portugal earlier this year and I hosted a little picnic meetup and one girl brought this batch of Adria. I remember really, really liking her dessert. It was super strange, but so good. You add all the ingredients except for the pasta to the pot first. That's water, non-dairy milk, non-dairy cream, sugar, salt, cinnamon sticks, Vanilla, some turmeric for the egg color, and quite a bit of lemon zest. Bring this up to a quick boil. You do not want this to boil over. And then allow this to simmer for a good five minutes. And then you add the glass noodles. And you can, if you want to, add some raisins as well. Allow this to simmer for two to three minutes. And then you mix in some in water dissolved cornstarch. And you give this another four to five minutes or until the noodles are tender. Transfer the noodles to the tray. Make sure to remove the cinnamon sticks as well. Now you can either serve this up warm or you can let this firm up in the fridge and then try to kind of like slice it. Yeah, that's actually how I prefer eating this. I would recommend maybe adding some roasted chopped almonds on top for a bit of extra crunch. I, I like this a lot. And that concludes my little dive into different veganized Christmas treats. Again, check out my Christmas movie video from last year. It's where I've peaked personally. Also, thank you to my sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to build your own website and grow your online business. With member areas, Squarespace now gives you the chance to monetize your content in a super easy and authentic way. Choose from their wide range of website templates to get started. They're really easy and intuitive to use, so you can find the style that fits your brand best really easily. 
For example, you can add audio blocks to your site if it's a podcast that you're working on. Or if you're a video creator, you could use Video Studio, a video editing app that helps you create engaging and fun video content for all sorts of social media platforms. Get started today! Go to squarespace.com slash minarome and use code minarome for 10% off of your first purchase of a new site or domain. Thank you so much for being here. Subscribe if you're new and talk soon. Bye! So